So right now we're starting the maintainer forum. I'm really, really excited to be here um, and learning from everything's covering up everything else um, to learn from these awesome contributors who've made some significant contributions to open telemetry. Um, so let's go around and have each of our panelists introduce themselves, starting with um, Tyler. Um, cool. Yeah. I'm not normally the first. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Tyler. Uh, I work at uh, New Relic as a software engineer, um, and I'm a maintainer of the, um, uh, the Go special, special interest group of the SIG, as we call it in the OpenTelemetry project. Um, and I've been working uh, in OpenTelemetry for just about a full year at this point, um, pretty much every day, um, and working with these uh, other wonderful folk in the community. Um, I've also collaborated a lot with um, all these other people in the metric specification and the other sides of the specification as well. So um, I'm usually in a lot of different uh, parts um, of, of the specification, well, infrequently, but yes. Um, so yeah, that's kind of me. Um, and we can probably dig into some more details as we go on. Thank you, Tyler. Tristan, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Tristan. Uh, I work at Postmates and I maintain the Erlang and Elixir uh, implementation, uh, SIG, and I started with Open Telemetry, I guess, over a year ago now. I was maintaining the Erlang Elixir Open Census uh, implementation before that, and so segued into Open Telemetry when uh, the projects were merged. Thank you so much. Um, Tigran, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Tigran. Um, I'm an Open Telemetry maintainer and a technical committee member. I've uh, been with Open Telemetry since the very beginning. Actually, before that, uh, I, I worked on Open Census a, a little bit. Um, most of the work I do is on Open Telemetry Collector and on the specification, and uh, primarily it's the tracing and logging parts, a bit less so the metrics. Yeah. Thanks. And Bogdan? Hi, my name is Bogdan. I'm uh, one of the person that uh, is guilty for all this mess that we created. Uh, I started, uh, when I was back in Google, I started the Open Census project as a open source initiative coming from Google. We did make a lot of contributions in that project and Tristan was part of that, Tigran was part of that uh, effort. And then at one point we decided that you know what, I think we are doing something wrong for the community. We are competing standards between open tracing and open census, as everyone know. And here we are, we are open telemetry. And uh, I'm very happy for, for this, uh, this conference it was great. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And I'm Shelby Spees. I am a developer advocate at Honeycomb. And I'm just here to help moderate and um, ask some questions, ask questions from the chat. I also want to mention that anyone who's a maintainer on OpenTelemetry is encouraged to participate. Um, so go ahead and raise your hand in the in Zoom um, and we can have you contribute and answer questions. So um, with that, I will share the first question. What has been your experience as an OpenTelemetry maintainer and what are the challenges? Yeah, um, we can probably just start in the same order, I think is probably the best way. Um, and then Bogdan can laugh at me, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think it's actually kind of uh, ideal to kind of talk from my perspective because unlike um, some of the other maintainers on this uh, board, I didn't come from the world of already contributing and already building the open census or open telemetry. Uh, in fact, I came from a world where I was using uh, open census or using open telemetry or, or better to say evaluating as Bogdan kind of put out, there was a little bit of a, you know, which one would you want to use? Um, and was extremely passionate about like this idea that um, having an open standard is, is really needed and uh, the community I think can really benefit from it. Um, and as I transitioned into continue, uh, contributing more into the project into becoming eventually um, a maintainer for the, the GoSig, uh, it's just been uh, really, I think, um, one that is a positive experience based on the community. 
uh, I think Rachel Klein gave a great talk earlier, a little light and talk about the community in general. And I think it kind of under, uh, understates the fact that like the community itself is actually a really positive uh, element about contributing in the open source world. And I've really appreciated that, that dynamic of it. Um, it also moves at its own speed, um, which coming from a, a very closed source world is, is not the speed that essentially um, I'm used to. So it's kind of fun to try to, to get up to that um, new kind of model of, of operating, I think has also been really, really exciting. Um, and then just to benefit from the immense knowledge that comes from uh, these other maintainers and other collaborators and other contributors um, uh, participating in a, in a very awesome uh, and hopefully impactful project uh, going forward has been kind of the, the run I've had so far. Um, continuing on is uh, I'm really excited about as well, but we'll get into that. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Go ahead, Tristan, sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think I have a, a unique perspective on maintainership in this because uh, open there wasn't ever an open tracing Erlang Elixir official API or anything. So there are dozens of them spread throughout. Uh, and when open telemetry started, since it was merging in open tracing, I spent a lot of time going through uh, searching GitHubs and package repos and uh, Slack channels and finding all the people who maintain these uh, open tracing Elixir or Erlang implementations and asking them to join forces and uh, drop, try to drop theirs and push their users onto open telemetry. And we've been slowly moving forward with that and it's been uh, pretty successful and people have been uh, pretty happy to work together. And we recently started the Erlang Foundation and that's uh, been a part of this. Uh, so yeah, a big challenge has been that consolidation, but I, I think it's uh, it's working out and it, it makes people feel uh, more comfortable with uh, the language with Erlang or, or Elixir used in their company because they see this CNTF project and uh, with 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 us involved and that they're able to integrate with the other uh most companies aren't purely one or you know an erlang or a lickler shop so they have to integrate with all these other languages and being able to work in this community uh with people implementing in other languages has been uh, really useful uh towards that Yeah, I was really excited to see that the Erlang Elixir um, integration was one of, one of the more mature ones um, because that's that's not always something you see in, in open source tooling. So mm -hmm. awesome job there. Um, so we have one question from the audience and I went ahead and edited my slides so everyone can see it. Let me try and be cool on the fly. <laughs> Um, that is not this one. How is the race towards a release candidate going in your SIG? And what are the things that the community can do to help? So, Tegan, it looks like you want to say something. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's a good question. I think uh, we're doing pretty well in the specification SIG. We uh, have just frozen the portion of the specification which defines how tracing is supposed to work. So we're, we're very near the, the finish line for the specification. And we know that the uh, language maintainers, language SDK maintainers are also ready to uh, give us the implementations according to the specification. I would say we are now very close to, to the finish line to 1.0 release. So I feel very good about what we uh, have done so far with the tracing part and the metrics, uh, Josh was talking about that a, a bit earlier, is coming pretty soon after that. So we're doing well in, in, in all of the regards here. That's, that's my perspective. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, I think Shelby's muted. I'm just going to jump in with that same question. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's a 
uh, I think we're, we're going along in the, the ghosting. I can speak uh, specifically. Um, obviously, the, the metrics side of things and the specification is still a work in progress, but um, we are making progress on that. And so um, it's more, I think, from the GOSIG perspective, uh, an interesting thing because now we are really coming to the end of the, the tracing specification saying like, this is going to be the release candidate. So really go make it, um, you know, implement the specification. Sounds um, cool. It sounds like cool. Now you're done essentially. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that um, it's the implementations of that specification and the language communities that we're going to be offering them to the adoption needs to be uh, something that they want to use, I think. And that as a, as a SIG author is, is really critical to me at this point in time, um, because I, I, there are you know, always multiple ways to implement a solution and sometimes they're better for that language um, than others. And I think that having feedback from the community that we're hoping to eventually give this out to is uh, paramount at this point. Like it's, it's absolutely critical. And we're trying um, through many different ways of, uh, requesting feedback through forums or through other like uh, direct access to other um, users uh, to, to get some feedback into those language implementations and trying to iterate them on those uh, fast going forward. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a work in progress. And I think that we're going to be asking and trying to do a lot more of that um, going forward. Uh, I see my one of my co-maintainers uh, in the GoSig, Anthony, uh, jumped on as well, um, not to put him under the, the, the spotlight too much. Um, but I think that uh, he has a really great perspective as well because he came from a world as an end user. Um, I think uh, Liz was pointing that out in the chat. Uh, and so like, really, I, I mean, we can have him talk a little bit um, as I'll throw him under the spotlight as well uh, about yeah, that, I, that perspective. I'll add him to the, oh, I, I can add him to the spotlight. There he is. Um, yeah. So we can put him on the spot to ask, answer those questions if that's okay, Anthony. Yeah, sure. Um, so, awesome. so yeah, as, as an end user, I came to the project, uh, I think fairly early on, um, because we were just starting a new um, application development project where we expected development is going to last two to three years. Um, and we were looking at, at how do we instrument this? And we saw, well, open tracing, open census are, are they're coming together, they're merging. So two to three years from now, when we're ready to go in, into production with this, they're not going to be there. Um, I guess that means we ought to we ought to get in early on this open telemetry thing. Um, and so, so we did. I, I dove in to, to start figuring out how the, the Go SDK worked. Um, Might have been a bit early because I, I think the first time I tried to do the Hello World um, example, um, the documentation had changed between the time that I pulled the code and the time that I went to look at the documentation to see why that what I tried to do from the example wasn't working. Um, but things have gotten a bit better from there. And the community was incredibly welcoming. So as soon as I jumped into the getter and started asking questions and saw that there were gaps um, in the capabilities that the instrumentation had um, that I could um, offer, offer up, you know, help with the HTTP instrumentation and, and things like that. Um, everybody was incredibly receptive to the help. Um, and that just kind of one thing led to another of you know, starting to review other people's pull requests, becoming a reviewer and approver. Um, and now here I am trying to help get it across the finish line to become uh, an RC and then a GA. Um, I would like to, to say, first of all, thank you to all maintainers, all approvers and all contributors to this project. Without, without this, we would not be here. Uh, secondly, I think at this moment, it's, it's very critical for us when we talk about RC, when we talk about GA, that now more and more uh, end users will help by trying our project. I think even though you don't do PRs contributions, helping us by, by uh, using our, our work and trying our, our APIs, our implementation and provide feedback is probably more valuable at this point than anything else. So please help if, if, you, if you want to, to help with this, it, it will be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and, and the Erlang Elixir SIG, we're nearing you know, uh, completion with the tracing API and SDK. And so when people have been coming and asking about how they can help, I usually say, can you write examples? And, put them up uh, on, on GitHub so that we can point people to running examples. That's a really good place to help out. Thank you so much. And, and definitely like, I was really excited to see 
the talks this morning on just how to how to get involved and how welcoming the community is and and from from what i've been learning um you know just the past like six eight months of of being even aware of the open telemetry community um i'm really excited to dive in and, and start contributing in my own way so thanks everyone for just you know making the community so great um let me pull up my next question share uh, so how can users provide feedback to maintainers and to the community in general? Like what, what is the best way to go about that? I, I will take this first just because uh, Tyler sure. was, uh, give him a moment to laugh at me. So <laughs> sharing uh, this experience. Um, so first of all, I think uh, I, I saw during the, the life of this project uh, different ways to, to give feedback. I saw certain people uh, coming, writing some small Google Docs or whatever, some documents with the, which incorporate the feedback and share that with us. That, that's a very, very nice way. And I think it, we, we treated all of them very seriously. And I think we, from there, we filed issues and, and so on. So we, we took that in consideration. And I think Go has a good experience with that. Tyler can, can explain more about that. Um, the, other, the other way that I saw people doing this is via issues. So simply create issues with, with, your, with your problem, with your feedback, try to, to, to uh, explain the problem that you are trying to solve and try to, to give, uh, um, actionable item out of that issue. So somehow how we can help. Uh, I think overall, any channel, any way that trans that that makes a transfer uh, a translation from from your head to our head is good. It doesn't matter how it is, as long as we we transfer this information somehow. It's it's very good and i'm i'm happy with any way but some some other maintainers may have other preference but yeah thank you and, and from what my understanding is there's there's the getter get getter um channels for each um language and and the different sigs and as well as the um cncf channels is that like sort of year round um that you can participate in the cncs slack and ask questions there, um, the GitHub repositories, opening issues there. But um, yeah, I've, I've certainly had my moments where I'm just like, man, I can make a list and just some Google Doc and share that with somebody. Is here, here are all the things that I want help with um, or I'd like to help improve. So um, that's good to know so that we don't have to. to just, yeah. just to clarify one thing. Thanks, uh, Morgan. The, yeah, we're using the the CNCF Slack for the duration of the KubeCon conference, but we typically don't hang out too much on it. Uh, Gitter's oh okay. After KubeCon, Gitter's, Gitter's better. Place. After GA, we may migrate to Slack. There's a bunch of discussions about that, but we don't want to pull the trigger on that quite yet. Sure, good to know. Thank you for clarifying. One one small comment on Gitter usage. Please use the public rooms. Uh, the direct, direct messages, they are, they are not visible to anyone else, right? Obviously, you'd want to use that if it's something you want to keep confidential. Otherwise, please use the public room so there's the, there is the visibility for everyone else. Others can participate as well. And, uh, and you can, you're also very welcome to come to the SIG meetings. They are open for participation. Uh, they are great for live discussion. If you have something that you would like to both give feedback and also discuss, that's a, that's a great setting to come and talk to people uh, who are uh, working on the particular SIG. That's, that's all um, language SIGs, the collector SIG, the specification SIGs. Apologies, I had the wrong window clicked. Technical difficulties. Here's my next question, though. Um, I know I know lots of people have been talking about this today, but um, my question started out as how do you see open telemetry evolving over the next year? But I think I really want to know is what what's the most excited, uh, most exciting evolution besides GA or besides your release candidate um, that you're um, excited about in this upcoming year? Should I call on somebody? <laughs> uh, 
So I, I think one of the things I'm most excited about is seeing what the the end user community does once they've got a GA release that they feel comfortable taking and running with. Um, we've got a lot of great instrumentation that's been added to the Go contrib repo, um, but I think it covers just a tiny slice of what's out there. Um, and so I'm really interested to see how people instrument other libraries, what libraries they instrument, um, and, and where it goes once we hit that real taking off point of having a GA release. I'd like to expand a bit on what, what Anthony said. I think it's very important for us once 1.0 is released to focus on our attention on actually making open telemetry popular. We want open telemetry to be widely used, right? I want to, I personally want to see every software library, every piece of popular software, database management system, web frameworks to, uh, to have to be instrumented by open telemetry, right? And, and, and so that, that instrumentation will, is also maintained as a first class capability by the authors of the library and the framework. Uh, obviously this is a very big goal, right? It will take years to be there, but I, I think it's very important for us uh, maintainers, uh, contributors to open telemetry to, uh, to think about this and, and make this our, our vision. We want to make sure that open telemetry is attractive to developers. It's easy to use. Uh, so we, we need to spend time on popularizing open telemetry to sell it to developers. I think this is very important. Um, to follow up on that, do you know of any framework developers, framework maintainers who are involved in open telemetry or who are using open telemetry on their frameworks? As far as I know, .NET has plans to open telemetry. .NET, .NET shipped with open telemetry or a subset of open telemetry and they keep adding new functionality. Uh, the other, by the way, another work that we did was with the Spring community, with the, with the Spring Sleuth community, uh, thanks to, to Marcin, one of the, the maintainers of the Spring Sleuth uh, tracing uh, artifact there. Uh, he, he made a huge contribution, so most likely, I don't know if it's already released or is going to be released this week or something like that. The new Spring Sleuth will include the Open Telemetry as well as one of the options there. Additionally, that's uh, fantastic. Go, um, no, go ahead. Is, yeah, right. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, I think we also have contributions in the the Go Redis uh, library itself directly, which was a really awesome thing to see. Um, and it's a pretty cool just to see like a, a you know very organic adoption at that level. Um, and that's in addition to all the contrib repos um, that we host internally, uh, which are essentially plugin models, which have also seen contributions from outside developers to help progress those. So you're getting a lot of community involvement there as well. Yeah, for me, I'm excited to see more vendor adoption uh, as uh, in Erlang and Elixir, it's always been you write just enough to support a vendor that you want to ship to and that's all you get because vendors never <laughs> write uh, uh, in integrations for us and now it'll be a, a different world when uh, vendors are adopting open telemetry and we're able to to use hopefully very most all of their their features through it which will be a very different world and i think it'll get a lot of adoption coming in to uh, from like our big frameworks in Elixir, the Phoenix framework to start using these uh, these vendors and uh, tools. Yeah, talking about vendors, this is a good point. I'm starting to see more and more vendors trying to make the canonical way uh, or recommended way to be open telemetry, which means more and more uh, contributions will come to the, to the project because once a vendor starts selling this, they have to, to contribute more, they have to make it more robust, they have to increase uh, quality and everything. So I think this is, this is uh, definitely a good point. Uh, I also want to see next year, maybe a world 
where different frameworks or independent independent projects like the one you uh, pointed Tyler the Go Redis different other projects starting to to instrument themselves uh, and take a dependency on this and see how that world will will become and uh, if that will become a better world or not I, I hope it will be better Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to, uh, to go back to the original question of also like how we see it, it evolving. I think that we've done a really good job talking about like how we see the code evolving. Um, but I'd love to kind of just follow on what Bogdan was kind of leading into it as like, I'd love to see that community become, uh, you know, bigger and, um, and continue on in its path to, to inclusivity that we try to um, engender in our community. I think that that's a really awesome thing. And I think it's something we can continue to build. So I'm really excited to um, to just help in whatever way I possibly can and, and to facilitate that, yeah. I think one, Thank you so much. Oh, oh, go go for it. Thanks, Warren. Yeah, I was gonna say one last thing is also there's the some work going on in logging and that won't be part of the um, release candidate or GA process that we have planned for traces and metrics, but next year we are gonna see logs arrive for open telemetry later in the year and that's also quite exciting. Um, and then we have a question for the audience, and I would love to get some answers in the chat. What do you want? What do you, what do people want to see from the project in the next year that that you haven't heard about today? What is something that you're just like itching for um, to for the maintainers to start prioritizing? Well, I know my answer is um, more um, sort of like introductory materials or like helping helping people, especially, you know, whether you're developers or, or infrastructure engineers or whatever, like you probably haven't had to think about um, instrumentation this way before. Um, or a lot of people have, and a lot of people don't have experience with this sort of thing. And what I've found in the observability community is we're very good at talking about instrumentation. We're very good about talking about telemetry. Um, and most of our end users don't think about that every day, right? And so we tend to, to be very focused on that part and, and less able to like reach out to the people who, you know, this isn't their day-to-day -day work. Um, and now I'm seeing lots of answers in the chat. So I will I will read those aloud. So um, Liz Fung Jones, my colleague, feels that we need to do more outreach and workshops now that the API is stable. Um, and that's something that, that um, we've been working on. Um, Austin and, and Liz do the open telemetry workshop. They've they've given that. I know I know several other people in the community have done that. Um, Josh McDonald, um, who spoke earlier. Um, wants more logging when we reach GA. Um, this is an inside joke. Wants... This is yeah. an inside oh, okay. joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, short explanation. He 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 said he always pushes us to focus on GA and ignore other things, and then later we can talk about other things, which is good. Don't get me wrong, but. Mm -hmm. Um, Jonathan Wong wants war stories on onboarding your organization. And I would love that, especially Anthony, um, I know you shared your, your um, experience already, but anyone else who can, can share um, your, your experience getting your, your organization to adopt open telemetry, that, that would be awesome. Feel free to, to unmute and chime in. Um, and then also, yeah, more open source projects implementing OTEL, um, more framework authors using it. Uh, would be fantastic. Yeah, I can say from the end user perspective and getting an organization on board, the two things that I found critical were one, making it as easy as possible for the developers to get started. Um, and I, I think some of the vendors are, are starting to go down this path with the distributions concept of you know, here, here's a, an easy way to get everything configured. Um, I ended up internally writing a set of libraries that made it easy for you to hand us an HTTP handler and you get back a, a server uh, that is instrumented and all of the trace providers and metric providers are configured for you. Um, so it becomes very easy for a developer to take an existing service and get it onboarded. Um, 
And the second thing is showing them the value, showing them why they want to go in and add their own custom spans and attributes to those spans. Um, and for, for me, I think the, the most benefit I, I got was during the, the sprint demos, um, we were working on some backend services and things were fairly opaque to, to the end users. Um, but I was able to say, okay, you had a question about how this was working and why this happened. I can now show you, here's a Jaeger waterfall view where I can show you all of the things that this request did while it was processing. Um, and here's how it, it ended up getting to that result. Um, and not only the end users, but also the developers then were like, oh yeah, that, that makes it a lot easier for us to talk about what this thing is doing. Um, so then they, they were much more willing to, um, to engage with adding their own spans and attributes in the appropriate places. Uh, thank you, Anthony. And we have, um, I think this is a question, documentation on concurrency in open telemetry and exporters for database backends. Can someone speak to that? Tyler, yeah. Um, I, I can take a stab. Um, I, I think I think this is in, in the Go space, just based on some terminology um, and some of the known issues that we have there um, in the GitHub uh, org. Yeah, so one of our things is uh, obviously in Go, it's a, it's a very concurrent language and in a lot of other languages, like um, concurrency patterns are, are really important for performance, let alone um, uh, just overall uh, programmability and support across like other applications. I think that, uh, we, we've definitely tried to bake that sort of things in, in API, but um, maybe we could uh, also try to make that a little clearer from the end user's perspective. And then um, when it comes to database backends, uh, in Go, there's a very long standing issue. We're trying to provide a, you know, a very good support uh, for, for databases. It's, this is going to be a really important part of the, the long standing um, you know, application interactions. Um, so we want to make sure that OpenTelemetry has a really good story there. Uh, so, yeah, Raj, that's a, a great request. Hopefully, uh, a year's time from now, we're going to have a great story for you on both of those things. And I, I have a question. I didn't write it down. But what advice would you give to or, for um, either open source platforms or vendor platforms for, for implementing native OTLP and Jest? Um, if you want to start supporting supporting open telemetry for for users more easily, like how how can um, on the on the product side, like how can you prioritize like OTLP is a good idea? Um, we want to support that natively. And then, what advice would you give as well for um, actually sitting down and implementing it? What 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 should people expect? I, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, on the tracing side, I would say it's relatively straightforward because the, the the mental model of the traces or spans in OTLP is um, quite similar to what other protocols are using Jaeger or open census there is no uh, mismatch or, or surprising new semantics or, or concepts uh, or, or very little of, of, of anything that is completely new uh, in OTLP traces portion of it uh, if you're, if you're, especially if you're familiar with a particular protocol, you can have a look at the translations code in the in the OpenTelemetry collector, which will show you precisely how, for example, Jaeger concepts map to OTLP uh, OTLP concepts for traces. For metrics, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, if you if you were in the presentation that Josh gave a bit earlier. There is going to be um, more complications, particularly coming from the fact that there is um, more new types of metrics available in, uh, in open telemetry and, and corresponding in OTLP, which have different semantics. So that may require your backend to, uh, to be expanded, right, to support those, those types those types of metrics. Uh, I think we will have more clarity on that when the specification on the metrics is finalized. And uh, I think the metrics will have, uh, will have also probably the recommendations and definitely there will be clear semantic definitions in the specification what the, 
proper particular metric types uh, are intended to reflect, and that will drive your implementation in the metric portion of um, my, my two cents here, by the way, if somebody would start a completely new open source backend for, for all these three pillars that we, we produce, metrics, traces, logs, I would encourage them to start thinking from the, what we call resource perspective. So model from the resource, and then from there, they can use their imagination to, to build the UX experience. But that would be just a, a free uh, advice for, for somebody who, who wants to, to build the new open source uh, backend about this. I think it's it's pretty cool concept that you you have a notion of a resource and you can see metrics, traces and logs that belong to the same entity in uh, in in one place. That's a really good answer. Thanks for thanks both of you for um, giving such a detailed answer and I think um, as both on the vendor side and on the open source side, um, we're going to see more people just, you know, jumping at the opportunity to support open telemetry natively because um, it's it's been so rewarding just seeing learning more about this community and seeing how um, all these people who sh should be competitors, you know, working together towards this common goal of just making our 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 data more accessible and easier to manage. So um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, and I think I can hand it off to Liz and Ted for closing remarks. Uh, thanks to all our panelists and maintainers who hopped on. Uh, and uh, I'll hand it off to Liz. Hey, thank you for moderating both panels this afternoon, Shelby. You did a really great job.